Welcome everyone to Courtside, a discussion of Donald Trump and the legal mess he's in. It's a day 72. Donald Trump stands alone and unique as the only president to be impeached two different times, the only president to have a bipartisan impeachment, the only president to have so many impeachment votes against him. The vote came down to 232 to 197 nays. The 197 nays apparently don't mind if you lay siege to their workplace. Or rather, they would mind, but somebody toppled a statue six months ago, so it's all good. Republicans in Congress offered a valuable lesson in close reading, offering choice interpretations of Donald Trump's comments, Martin Luther King's speeches, and the like. And it was like, pick your favorite part and ignore any context that threatens to get in the way, get in the way of your cowardice. And as I reflected on the debate yesterday over the last 24 hours, there is something pretty striking. You really don't have any Republicans defending Donald Trump. You don't have the White House even defending Donald Trump. All you hear is some garbly gook about unity and the impeachment being too late and such like that. And I know the conventional wisdom is that there isn't a defense because Trump's actions are basically indefensible. And I think that's true, but I think it's a lot more than that because these folks are cool defending the indefensible. I think it's because these Republicans know they're complicit. And if they condemn Trump, then they know they're going to be hit over the head with their own prior statements of support. I mean, most of these 197 people were part of the insurrection caucus, saying the election was stolen and all sorts of nonsense and cheering on Donald Trump. Now, last night, after we recorded, Trump recorded a five-minute speech and, re and released it on video that, I guess, condemns the violence. It's remarkable. You should listen to it because it's like the flattest delivery ever. It has none of the passion and fortitude of Trump's 1,448 different speeches uh, in which he's in basically inciting people to violence and claiming the election was stolen. What a pathetic speech yesterday. Far too little, far too late. There's no humility in this speech, no regret, no reflection. He doesn't even urge it. Say the word Biden or inauguration. I mean, if you or I, God forbid, were ever in this circumstance or any decent person, and even if we'd made a mistake, we'd own up to it. He doesn't do any of that. This speech, as the New York Times reported, has all the hallmarks of being written under the gun because, according to the Times, his lawyers warned him he was facing criminal liability, so he had to say something. Now, at this point, Donald Trump has a 33% approval rating nationally, and according to the impeachment vote, a 46 approval rating in Congress. I guess one could say, well, <laughs> the American people, they're not quite sending their best to Washington. But speaking of the best, today in the Senate, Senator Murkowski came out in favor of impeachment, quote, for months, this president has perpetrated false rhetoric that the election was stolen and rigged, even after dozens of courts ruled against these claims. President Trump's words incited violence, which led to the injury and deaths of Americans. The House has responded swiftly, and I believe appropriately, with impeachment. Now, Senator Tom Cotton, of course, is arguing on the other side that Donald Trump can't be impeached after he leaves office. I guess he used his entire allotment of courage for the year when he voted to certify the results last week. In any event, I'll get into this whole cotton garbage about whether you can impeach a former official another night. Uh, I won't do it tonight, it won't have time, but it's bogus. We've done it, we've impeached former officials before. And here the case is very strong because after all, the impeachment started while Donald Trump was president. So even if you think there's no freestanding ability to impeach former officials here, because the impeachment's already happened and it's just the trial, the case is very, very strong. Now, the other big news today is that Donald Trump is evidently stiffing Rudy Giuliani and refusing to pay his bills. Donald Trump won't even reimburse Giuliani for all the money he paid to fly in witnesses from the land of make-believe. Donald Trump here got what he paid for. Lawyers and clients here, these lawyers and this lawyer and this client really do deserve each other. 
I mean, think about it. The only lawyer Donald Trump could get as the sitting president of the United States was a guy who was under active investigation by his old office, the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Southern District of New York. And if you think about it, last week, Donald Trump got a new title, a new job title, Insider in Chief. And Rudy Giuliani got a new one too, cheerleader to the insider in chief. Between Rudy Giuliani not getting paid and Donald Trump having Giuliani as a lawyer, I really can't tell who got the raw end of this deal. Now look, Donald Trump is famous for not paying his bills. And given Trump's track record, I'm tempted to say it's surprising that Rudy Giuliani didn't see this coming. But look, we all should know by now that Giuliani's strong point is not grasping the finer points of evidence. So Giuliani is not getting paid, it looks like. But maybe Giuliani's holding out hope for a different kind of payment. I mean, some lawyers like cash, others like me, I'll take Bitcoin. Giuliani, I suspect, prefers a different form of currency, the pardon. So here's my guess for these last six days. Either, number one, Trump finally gives Giuliani that pardon, or number two, Giuliani makes Trump regret his decision not to pay for some attorney-client privilege. Look, in the end, I think you gotta feel a little bad for Rudy. We thought he hit rock bottom when he attempted to illegally strong-arm Ukrainian officials and got his own client impeached in the process. That was so 2019. In 2020, we watched Rudy Giuliani literally melt during a press conference on national TV without even getting a dime for it. At this rate, poor Rudy may never be able to afford another stay at the renowned Four Seasons Landscaping. Well, that's it for today. Um, I will see you, I think I'm gonna take tomorrow off, so I'll see you sometime over the weekend. Good night.